Hey guys, my name is Rachel Wynn, and today I'll be talking to you about the plant Conium maculatum, its background, properties, and toxicology. Conium maculatum, also known as poison hemlock, has been utilized all over the world since before Christ. More popularly known as the poison that killed Socrates, its toxic properties have been exploited for centuries. Every leaf, stem, flower, and root of the poison hemlock plant contains these toxic molecules, yet somehow the ancient Anglo-Saxons figured out a way to use it externally as a way to treat herpes and breast tumors. Poison hemlock is a herbaceous biennial plant that can be identified by its hollow green stem that is usually spotted with purple or red blotches, its triangular shaped pinnate leaves, and small white flowers. Each stem produces a multitude of smaller branches which divide and produce sets of smaller petioles, each yielding a tiny apical flower. The arrangement and proximity of these white flowers create the illusion of a single, more dominant flower and serves as an effective technique to attract pollinators. Conium maculatum is native to Europe and was brought to North America in the 1800s by European settlers who wanted to make America feel more homey. Since then, it has become a very prolific weed, a generalist that requires high light and wet conditions to thrive, but will do just fine in less hospitable conditions as well. You can usually find poison hemlock in high traffic open areas as the plant still relies on other organisms for its seed dispersal. Poison hemlock and Queen Anne's lace look very similar, but can also be distinguished fairly easily by their flowers and also by their roots. Poison hemlock, put simply, is made up of a multitude of tiny clusters of flowers that merge to resemble a single large one, while Queen Anne's lace actually is only one cluster of tiny flowers. As you can see when examined beside one another, these two species are easily distinguished. Poison hemlock consists of five different alkaloids that are all interconverted between one another based on environmental conditions. These conditions include, but are not limited to, quantity and quality of light, exposure to water stress, and or temperature change. The two most toxic molecules are conine and gamma conosine. The toxicity at any time within a certain tissue of this plant is dependent upon the ratio of these two molecules at that particular time. When activated, the alkaloids act as neurotoxins. The biosynthetic pathway responsible for making these toxic hemlock alkaloids is the polyketide pathway. This pathway utilizes the amino acid lysine as a precursor building block for conine and all of its other conformations. When ingested, poison hemlock is a brutal beast. First you start trembling, and then you start vomiting. Dilation of the pupils is a sure sign the poison is working and a suppressed heart rate can be promised to follow. Paralysis of the central nervous system is a sure sign you are dying and just when you think you've had enough, paralysis of the muscles will lead you straight to respiratory failure and then death's door. Poison hemlock can also severely agitate the throat, skin, and eyes if come in contact with it. You should always wear a face mask when mowing the lawn or de-weeding your garden that contains any poison hemlock. Interestingly enough, the same conine alkaloids found in poison hemlock can also be located in a few species of aloe cultivars. While these plants are not considered toxic, they do still contain the same aromatic properties or the same mousy odor as the hemlock plant produces. This is an indicator that the molecule is present, just lacking its lethal properties. With that said, that's all I have for you guys. So thanks for sticking with me till the end of this. Have a good one.